Hey everybody, this is your instructor, Daryl Moore. I want to welcome everybody here. I want to welcome you to, to, to Full Sail. I want to welcome you to the class, create a presentation. Hope you guys are having a good day. I hope everything's uh, going well for you. Um, so let's get started. Uh, these live sessions, we're going to hold them in the beginning of the week. Uh, they're being recorded. So if you can't make it to a live session, it's okay. Uh, we'll have those recordings posted about an hour after the meeting ends and they'll be up for the rest of the week. So if you're not able to attend live, all we ask is, is you watch the video sometime during the week so that you are caught up. And um, each week we'll get you set up uh, with the activities. Basically uh, the way this class works, it's four weeks long and there are a new set of activities that open up every Monday morning and they're due on Sunday night. So you pretty much have all week. There are some things that are due a little bit earlier and I'll, I'll mention that, but uh, most of the time, you've got all week to get everything done. And uh, in that regard, you can make up your own schedule. But what we prefer to do is to kind of give you an order of how you could work through it and um, uh, try to start, start some study habits. Um, these four-week classes for Full sale go by awfully fast, and you have to get used to them. Uh, we're going to go by a little slower this month. It's month one. So uh, it's not as rock and roll as a regular full sale class, but we're going to get you going. It's going to be kind of an on-ramp. So today, uh, basically, I want to get everybody oriented, just sort of talk about the system, what we're expecting. I want to talk about the reading. Uh, this, this course is based on two books, and uh, uh, we we're not reading everything, but we are assigning several chapters per week as relevant, and it's good to get the reading done earlier in the week so that you've got that as a base to work on. Uh, we don't really give you quizzes or anything on the reading. We just ask you to do the reading. However, um, you, you probably, and, and very much this week, need what's in the reading in order to be able to get the assignments accomplished. Uh, and usually there's a discussion and a main activity. So I want to talk about those, talk about those assignments this week and take all the mystery out of that. Uh, Going to school online is uh, uh, very uh, treacherous, uh, but it's, it's actually much easier than being on campus these days because of the weirdness of what's going on in the world. You know, you, you don't have to wear a mask if you're online. Uh, you're in the comfort of your own home. Then again, you're in the comfort of your own home. If you want to wear a mask, feel free. Uh, let your inner Wookiee run wild. Uh, that's part of being an online student. You get to make up your own schedule. You get to be your own person. Uh, but it also means that you're struggling more to contact with people. If you're in an on-campus class, if you make it to school, then you're there, you see everybody, and some things kind of happen automatically from that gravity. But as an online student, you're going to struggle to make contact with people. I highly recommend that you, you, uh, you make friends with your classmates you start to interact with them uh, and you build relationships because that's how you're going to go through full sale. And to that extent, we've given you a couple of different places where you can uh, record your thoughts. There's open uh, uh, discussion boards on, on the, the site. Uh, I have a discord channel, which allows people to talk. It's not anything that's part of the class. It's just a way that you guys can connect and, and, and help each other and any ways that you can find to talk to each other. Any ways that you can find to talk to me work fine. So we're just gonna, um, everybody finds the, the channel of, of communication that's most useful to them. Now these live classes are taking place on Zoom. Zoom was not very well heard of until the uh, Corona crisis hit and then suddenly everybody was using Zoom. So there's not a whole lot of mystery about Zoom. Uh, one of the things about Zoom is that it has a configurable interface. So what you see depends on what you want to see, more or less. Uh, everyone is seeing my desktop. And so essentially, these lectures are going to be uh, a series of slides on my desktop. Eventually, halfway through the lecture, I'll just dump out of the slides and go straight into a live web browser and we'll be on the website doing the actual homework. So you can watch me doing the homework. And so you'll be listening to my voice. Now. Um, I've got my camera on right now. Uh, I'm not uh, particularly handsome, so uh, there's no uh, great advantage to having me on camera. And you can configure as many of your classmates as possible. 
but most people have their cameras turned off. We don't ask people to turn their cameras on. It's up to you. Uh, we've already got your mics locked off so that we can control the audio, but I can turn the mics on and off so we can talk to each other back and forth. Um, so anybody who wants to um, run their video camera can, but I just recommend that we just uh, take that track out and, and you can concentrate on the screen. Um, but uh, there's a chat box. Uh, some people have got it accessed and we know what's going on. Uh, it's very useful for asking questions. So while I'm talking, sometimes I get carried away and I'm not necessarily noticing things. If um, you're not seeing the right thing on the screen or, or things are messed up, you can get my attention uh, sometimes with it, uh, by typing in the chat box. Uh, you can ask other questions. You can make comments while we're going. You can ask que uh, questions about what we're doing and if I, can see it in time, I'll stop and answer questions. I'll always stop at some point and, and, and get caught up with questions. Uh, what I'd like everybody to do right now is just go to the chat box and type where you're from. You're all, some of you are already doing that. So we can see how much of the country is represented here. We have people from all over the country, I'm sure, all time zones. Some people, times people are uh, even out in the rest of the world. We have uh, Utah, Wisconsin, California, Florida, Georgia, Texas. So. Uh, Pretty good on the Midwest. I see Puerto Rico again. We got lots of students from Puerto Rico sometimes. Um, uh, Puerto Rican students tend to, to live in Florida because Puerto Rico isn't working too well right now. I wouldn't want to have to get my Wi-Fi going in Puerto Rico these days. Um, but uh, that's an issue for everybody. Uh, we're all having ter terrible weather. Um, you know, Texas just had a hurricane, uh, or Louisiana just had a hurricane. There are wildfires in California. Uh, hurricanes hit Florida, you know, people are going to lose power. So uh, realize that, uh, you know, things aren't perfect. And um, just let us know what's going on. And if you're ever having trouble uploading or you're ever having um, technology problems, you know, we will give you extensions on deadlines and things and work with you and try to figure out alternate ways to get things done. But uh, the Zoom interface is, is generally, um, pretty easy to figure out. It's pretty easy to configure. Uh, if you're on a phone, you may just be listening to the voice only. Sometimes you may see the voice and slides. Um, but the uh, one-on-one the -on -one video aspect of it, uh, I think is, is less important. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my uh, camera. So um, you guys uh, can, can make advantage of this as much as you can. Uh, if you, one thing I do recommend is that um, even if you keep your camera off, it's a good idea to go into the preferences and add your uh, school profile picture, because uh, that shows up instead of just a blank space with your name on it. Uh, that's much more friendly and, and it's gonna make people remember who you are. So uh, the picture avatar is nice to have uh, when, and it shows whenever you don't have your camera going. So um, I've kind of introduced myself, I'm Daryl Moore. I've been full sale for over a dozen years. I've been teaching and working in video for 30 years or more. I'm an actual gray beard, really old guy. Um, but I was a, uh, I used to write books on uh, film and make original productions for uh, um, home video rental. And then I got into online education uh, and uh, I was doing it before it was uh, really popular, but I was doing it when only uh, law firms and pharmaceutical firms could, could afford it, but uh, uh, I, I uh, was able to get in really early on that. And somewhere around uh, 2005, uh, Full Sail gave me a call, asked me to come down here, and uh, I've been teaching digital video for uh, about 10 years, 12 years, and uh, the last two or three years, I've been teaching creative presentation. Uh, my video class isn't too different from uh, the creative presentation class, this is really about storytelling. Uh, so we're gonna ask you to speak publicly, we're gonna ask you to tell stories, we're gonna ask you to talk out loud, uh, we're gonna ask you to communicate, and you're gonna use it, you're gonna do that using multimedia. And you haven't had any classes in audio or video production or even slide production yet, but we're gonna make sure that you all are having access to tools that you can uh, easily use and configure. And we're not gonna ask you to do anything more than what you do normally in, in posting to 
Instagram or, or YouTube or uh, TikTok. So uh, you guys are all uh, steeped in multimedia already. So um, we're not going to ask anybody to work above the level of technology you already exists. So it shouldn't be that scary. Uh, but I want everybody to commit to being on camera, uh, whether on, uh, uh, on video with your face or just audio. But uh, audio is very important. Uh, talk about how to use our voice to connect with people. And I want to be very available this month. Uh, the only way this works, you guys are all on different schedules and believe me, there are a lot of you, you're going to all going to have be working at different times. And I want to be as uh, available as possible. That means I'm scanning the site for your messages at all times. But even there, uh, it's usually an, a half hour or more before I can find your message and get back to you. So to, to the extent that I want to be um, accessible, I'm happy to give everybody my cell number. It's, uh, it's listed here. It's in the intro email that, uh, that you got. Um, and you can put that in your phone and text me whenever you like. I've got my phone with me at all times. So if you have a question and you want an answer right away, the best way to get a hold of me is by texting me. Um, there's only so much conversation we can have by text, however. If you, if you're, um, you know, if you give me one of those questions about what is the meaning of life and 42 just won't do, then I'm going to have to call you and we'll have a little bit longer conversation, but that's easy enough to do. And again, uh, the easiest way to do that is through my phone. So I want to be available to you whenever I can. Uh, I want to be able to guide you through this. Uh, I'm not, I'm not guiding everybody through the same answer. Everyone has different issues. Uh, the way we teach here at Full Sail is something called project-based learning, which means that you learn by doing things and you build uh, media projects and you're each gonna sort of have different media projects to build. So there isn't the same answer that works for everybody. And uh, my advice is more along the lines of coaching. Uh, you could do this or you could do that, but nobody is doing the same thing. So everybody has sort of a, a different path that they're on. And, and uh, my job is to make sure that you're just staying on the, the right path for you. Uh, so let's try to find out who some of you guys are. Uh, there's 21 of you here. I don't know if we want to get through everybody today, today but we'll just see. Uh, we'll get started and, and see how it works. So I'm going to call on people and unmute your microphone. And I'm going to give you uh, 15 seconds to answer four questions. Now, this is not a trick quiz. I'm going to give you the questions already. The questions are, what is your name? Where are you from? What are you studying? Because this class is composed of people going to all different degrees at Full Sail. You're, you're not going to really be getting into the classes where you're only with your, uh, you know, uh, uh, degree program folks until uh, month four or five. So in these first couple of months, you're going to see people from all different degrees. And this is a great chance to network because um, this may be your only chance to meet a, a sound composer or a writer or a director or a lighting designer or an animator. And those things can come in handy later in your life. Full Sail was very big on networking and we all want to, you know, make friends that we can rely on for the rest of our life. So you want to tell us what you're here to study. And then finally, uh, in a Rorschach test, give me two words that describe your professional vision. So I'm just going to try to go down the, uh, the list here. I'm going to call on uh, Adriana Berlstein. Are you there? Adriana? Uh, my internet seems to be a bit bad right now. I'm so sorry. Oh, well, I hear you. Um, my name is Adriana. I'm from Puerto Rico. My major is creative writing and my professional vision would be illustrative storytelling. Excellent. That was perfect. Thank you. Christopher Moncada. Uh, that's me. Can you hear me? Yes, you sound good. Okay. My name is Christopher Moncada. I'm from El Paso, Texas. I'm studying uh, digital cinematography. 
and two words describe your professional vision. Uh, very different. Very different. Okay, that works for me. Anna Neville. Hello. I hear you. Okay. Uh, my name is Anna. Uh, I am from Arizona. I'm studying game design and two words. Uh, I would say always learning. Always learning. Excellent. Thank you. Callie Williams. My name is Callie Williams. I'm from Georgia. I'm studying audio production and two words to describe my professional vision is professional studio, I guess. Okie doke, has worked, thank you. Um, Davidson Toussaint. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Davidson Toussaint and I'm originally from Haiti, but I live in Tampa for the last 10 years. I'm in the digital marketing program, and I think the tour that can describe me is consistent and vision. Excellent. Great words. Um, Elizabeth Mendez. Hi, um, my name is Elizabeth. Um, you can call me Lizzie. I'm from, well, I live in Utah. I'm studying computer animation, and uh, professional vision would be colorful, wacky. Colorful, wacky. Excellent. All right. Uh, we've got a whole lot more on it. I'm not going to try to call on everybody. Um, if you if you really want to introduce yourself, put your name in the chat, and I'll call I'll call from that list. So, Jalen? Jalen, are you there? I'm here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have my mic muted. I was talking to myself. It's crazy. But um, my name is Jalen. I'm from Atlanta. I'm from Hampton, Georgia. I'm studying game design and two words that would describe my professional vision is very weird. It's very like, weird. It's, okay, I'm going to ask you to live up to that now. I promise you I will. Uh, Hannah. Can you hear me all right or? Are you fine? Okay. Um, my name is Hannah Trent. Um, I'm from Era, Virginia. I am studying game art. And uh, two, two words to describe my professional vision would probably be um, out there. <laughs> out there, okay. <laughs> Works for me. Uh, Isaac Bello. Oh, hello. Is it working now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. My name is Isaac Bayo. I'm from uh, originally from New York, and I moved to Texas. I'm studying computer animation. Two words that describe my professional vision. Um, Weird and creative, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right, we're starting a trend now. Uh, keep Austin weird, I guess. Uh, Nick Barrett. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I'm Nick. Um, I'm from Mount Juliet, Tennessee. I'm studying film, and two words that describe my professional vision constantly creating there you go that works for me uh joshua morales hello hello can you hear me yes 
My name is Joshua Morales, but my pen name is Chua Morales. I am from Jacksonville, North Carolina. I am currently studying creative writing, and two words that will, that will describe my professional vision will be immersive worlds. Immersive worlds. Know where you're adding. Uh, Tracy Timmons, I believe. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, you sound good. Okay, yeah, so my name is Tracy Timmons. Um, I'm from Georgia. I'm studying film, and two words to describe my professional vision would be critical thinking. There you go, that's good. Uh, all right, our last one's going to be Giovanni Abilene, and I apologize for mangling that. Uh, it's fine. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, you sound good. All right. Uh, my name is Giovanni Avellan. I'm from Miami, Florida. I'm studying film. And two words would be almost anything. It covers Does a lot. that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Cover your bases. All right. Thanks, guys. That was good. Uh, I, I see you guys are... Uh, ready at the, at the, at the go. So uh, what do we expect from you guys? Well, we don't expect you guys to have all the answers right ahead of time. We expect you to participate. We expect you to step up and, uh, you know, um, let us know what's going on. You know, one of the things about online education is that uh, if we don't hear from you, we don't have a way of, of knowing how to interpret that. So, if you need help, you need to let us know, and help will be available. Uh, if, if not me, I, I have lots of other resources as well, but um, the school is really committed to helping you in every way that it can with every problem that it can. Uh, so uh, you need to um, let us know what you need, and then we can, uh, we can work at it from there. If you don't say anything, it's very hard for us to know if that just means you don't want to participate anymore or, or what. Um, if you are going to have issues, if you're uh, in the Army or in the, in the, in the um, uh, uh, reserve and you're about to go out on movements or something and you're not going to be available for a week, let us know ahead of time. Uh, if, you're, if a storm is coming and you're, you're probably going to lose power, let us know ahead of time. If you have issues, uh, we can work with you before or after the fact, but it's a lot easier when you tell us ahead of time. That makes you proactive. So let us know what's going on with you. Let us know when you need help. Don't be afraid to ask questions. We love for you to ask questions. So we don't expect you to know all of these things. Uh, we're gonna ask you to do, to create multimedia right here from the get-go, but we're not gonna ask you to work on anything that you've never really touched before. And you also have smartphones and you shot video of, your, of, of yourself talking into it. And that's as far as we need to go. So uh, you should be able to, to handle this. But what we're really asking you to do is to engage with us on a, on a content thematic level. To think about how to use your voice. Think about storytelling. To think about how to craft a message. That's what this this month is really about. It's not about the technology. We will get you through the technology uh, some way or another, but we're not here to you know, teach you. You're not gonna spend four weeks learning all the buttons on PowerPoint. We don't care about that. Uh, we care about what is the message? What do we have to say? Can, uh, can we make the message better? So what you should expect from me? Well, you shouldn't expect me to guide you through each uh, activity on a, a recipe type basis. I'm gonna give you pointers. The, the journey is the adventure for you guys. And so learning how to get there is important. Uh, learning how to interpret our instructions is important. If you read our instructions and they don't make sense, then I will guide you to some other sources. But um, nothing we want you to do is um, a rote activity. Everything is a kind of an exploration, a kind of creative leap on your part. And so we want you to go through some of that um, struggle to, to understand and, and overcome and, and, and solve those problems. 
So we'll be around to help you and we will have a thousand resources for you that, on that. Uh, you, you'll want a feedback, you're gonna get feedback from me. Uh, you're gonna get timely grading. You, I'm, I'll be uh, trying to answer your messages as quickly as possible. I'm not an ATM machine. I, go, I do go to bed sometimes, but you're gonna find me uh, available in the morning, available in the afternoon, available at night. So uh, I'm just the kind of person that's around most of the time and I'm not working a, a kind of nine to five type schedule. I'm trying to be available, but that doesn't mean I'm available 24 uh, seven. You can kind of take my office hours and throw them out, but essentially if you need to get a hold of me, hit my phone, text me, and uh, it'll work or it won't. And, and you won't have bothered me if you texted and I can't reply at that time. But I'm going to be trying to be as available as I can. Uh, professionalism. Now this is something you guys uh, click through in the uh, early uh, material that you, you're checking out in those first movies and, and uh, things about full sale in general and whatnot. And uh, you guys might not have really caught the full import of this. It was basically just a link to the student handbook or something like that. But professionalism is actually a part of every single class here at Full Sail. It's 10% of your grade. And the way it works is this. Uh, we want you to turn you not only into a creative professional who knows how to, to write or animate or program video games, but we want you to turn you into a working professional the kind of person that people want to hire. And the way we do that is to treat you like a working professional. We treat you with respect. We expect you to treat all your classmates with respect. And we're going to, uh, we're going to act like working professionals throughout your career here at Full Sail. And that does an awful lot to instill those values into you. You become the kind of person who shows up on time, who meets deadlines, who's helpful, who's courteous, who people want to hire. And uh, the way we enforce that kind of code is that in every single class, professionalism is 10% of your grade. And uh, from the beginning of the month, you get 100%. And if you create infractions that are uh, making you something less than professional, we will ding points for it. So if you're rude to classmates, if you say, uh, uh, you talk crap in the discussion boards. If you miss assignments, if you promise to do something and don't do it, uh, those are all the kinds of things that a workplace would not want to tolerate. And we enforce that discipline by adding it to your professionalism score. Now in month one here, practically nobody gets anything dinged. Everybody's so excited to be here. You're not yet uh, bored enough to be rude. So uh, it doesn't really factor in, but believe me in the long, 30 month slog to get your degree, there are gonna be times where you might wanna snap or, or be less than uh, um, hospitable to your classmates. But it's important that you maintain a professional manner at all time. And the professionalism score is uh, quite successful at doing that. Uh, so I don't need to talk about it much more, but know that you will hear about this professionalism and GPS, global professionalism system, throughout your time here at Full Sail. And uh, it goes along with a lot of other great perks uh, in terms of getting you ready for the workplace. There will be resume training, there will be interview training, there will be uh, branding training, there will be all kinds of efforts to make you into the kind of desirable, hireable employee that the, the world is looking for. Um, all right, so this class is based on two particular books that were written by the same woman, Nancy Duarte. And all of our books, in fact, all of the books for all of the classes here at Full Sail come from a third party source, O'Reilly Books. It's also called Safari Books, but O'Reilly Books is what they sort of changed their name to. And um, so we have a contract with them and you all have an account with Riley O'Reilly Books to access anything that they have. They have a library of over 100,000 books and they're all dealing with the creative media arts. So it's not a general library, it's a library that only deals with 
3D programming, game programming, web programming, photography, uh, video, uh, uh, movie making, audio production. The media arts is its primary focus. So everything that we teach here at Full Sail, they have books on it and they have thousands of books on it. So you're gonna find that it's a great resource and you have access to every single one of their books while you're here. It's a license for the term of your schooling. And all of the class, uh, all of the uh, textbooks that are assigned for any of the classes are gonna come from uh, O'Reilly. Now, uh, there's a little bit of a hitch and we're working our way through this, but um, um, the two books that we've assigned, uh, Resonate and Slideology, are available from the O'Reilly website. But there's some additional features that O'Reilly has now that they have a mobile app. They have a downloadable mobile app that, that's for Android and, and uh, iPhone that allows you to read offline. So you could go into their, uh, their huge library, identify books, download them to your phone and read them offline. But the two books that we've assigned are not part of that list. It just has something to do with licensing. It's, it's not anything they did on purpose or we did on purpose, but uh, in, in order to read these books, you need to be online, which is kind of a pain. Those of you that are on your own computer at home with cable network, Wi-Fi, shouldn't be a problem at all. But I realize that those of you who are on your phone, that can be an issue. So we will work through it. Um, and you need to be using the browser on your phone. You cannot use the app on the phone to read these files. So uh, know that there is an O'Reilly app and know that in future classes, you're gonna be able to use that to access all the books. But for this month, just assume that it's browser internet access only. So whatever browser you use, the Chrome browser, the uh, Internet Explorer browser, the Safari browser, uh, you're gonna go to their website. And your credentials from the school should pass you through. Anybody who's having trouble accessing the O'Reilly website and getting access to the books should let us know. Uh, tech support will fix that as soon as possible, but you need to have access to the books in order to get the reading completed. And uh, this week's reading is all from uh, the book Resonate. And the story behind these books is that Nancy Duarte is an art director, uh, a freelance art director. She was going to a lot of business meetings. Um, she, she wrote these books about 10 years ago, about 2006, 2007, 2008, whatever. And she was noticed as she was going to a lot of professional meetings with a lot of creative directors and artists and really, you know, uh, visually sophisticated people. And yet every meeting she seemed to find herself in, it was being run by PowerPoint and they were these really dog ass boring PowerPoints, you know, the kind where everything somebody has to, something somebody has to say is on the screen. Somebody's just reading the slides to you. Or if they're using art, it's the clip art, the little stupid cartoon art that comes from Microsoft. And Nancy Duarte wondered, why is it that even in a creative industry, people are just using PowerPoint in this way? And she thought that maybe people needed help in making better, more uh, impacting slides. So the first book she wrote is called Slideology. And it's kind of a graphic design book on how to create superior slides to support uh, what you have to say in a presentation. And that book was a huge success. And once it came out, the first, first thing she realized is that she had not told the entire story. That all she had done was dealt with how to make really good slides. Mm -hmm. But the main reason that there are bad PowerPoints in the world, and you know, believe me, we're, we're all gonna deal with it very squarely. Most PowerPoints you see, probably most of the PowerPoints you did in high school, you know, PowerPoints that you see in the army or watch at church, they're just dull. They're stupid. And uh, there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that people just put facts in there and they don't really know how to organize what they want to sell. But the main problem is that they think that PowerPoint, the software, creates the entire program. 
and that's not true. Uh, you, this month, you're going to hear us talk about PowerPoint a lot. And uh, know that this is not a PowerPoint class. You can use PowerPoint. You're all going to get the latest, greatest version of the PowerPoint uh, available to you. And none of you have to use it if you don't want to. Uh, and we think that PowerPoint is terrific software for what it's meant to do. And the problem is most people misunderstand that PowerPoint makes the entire presentation. It does not. PowerPoint makes slides, period. And what happens for most people when you're, you're assigned to do a presentation, you just go open up PowerPoint because you think that's what you're supposed to do first off. And so you open up PowerPoint, what happens? Um, you get a template choice where you pick some color backgrounds and some type fonts and some color choices and whatnot, some styles. And then it dumps you onto slide one. And suddenly you're looking at slide one and it's saying, feed me, type something here. And you haven't yet thought about all of the questions and issues there are behind the, pro the program that you have to do. And you're making the slides first. You haven't figured out what you have to say, what, what the, uh, the narrative is. And that's wrong. So number one issue about using PowerPoint incorrectly is don't open it up first. Open it up last. You do not open up PowerPoint until you're completely done with your narrative. You've got your voiceover fully correct uh, to record or you've already recorded it. And then you're simply going to use PowerPoint to create and sync slides. You're not gonna use it to, to write in. You're not gonna use it to design. That's not what it's for and that's why everybody screws it up. So open PowerPoint last. Uh, so. These are some of the issues that Nancy knew that she had to deal with. And so she wrote her second book, Resonate, to deal with what is the entire story of creating a presentation. And a lot of this has to do with Nancy Duarte's philosophy, but we highly subscribe to it here, which is that in order to have a great presentation, it isn't even necessary to have slides. It isn't necessary to use PowerPoint. It's necessary to have a story to tell, to know what you have to say, to know who you're talking to, to have planned out what it is that you want to communicate. And there are a number of properties of presentations that uh, are very important. One is that they're short. You do not pad a presentation to make yourself seem more important. You get through a presentation as soon as possible because it's meant to clarify the issues. Most most business meetings run on PowerPoint. Uh, you have a, a, a problem and you schedule an hour meeting with the important people in a, in a conference room and you start that one hour meeting off with a PowerPoint. Now that for opening PowerPoint shouldn't be more than five or 10 minutes long because its point is not to dominate the room, to do dominate the discussion, but to clarify the issues. It is to set up for everyone in the room this is what we're dealing with and we're not dealing with anything else. So presentations should necessarily be focusing on, on one thing and not have a lot of extraneous information on them. And therefore they need to be short, the shorter the better, the more impacting they are. Uh, and this is the reverse of what a lot of you have gotten in being told to make a PowerPoint and load it up with stuff because it's schoolwork. If you're making a presentation, you're making it to clarify issues for people. And the shorter, the better in clarifying issues. So businesses have been using PowerPoint to try to get these things done. And doing PowerPoints the wrong way just becomes an impediment to that. If someone takes up the entire hour of the one hour meeting, just reading through a list of stuff that needs to get done in PowerPoint without having a chance for discussion, without uh, saying what, what the issues are in, in uh, uh, conflict, then you haven't advanced the meeting at all. And modern industry wants to move very fast. That's the reason these short meetings, these PowerPoint presentations have become something that we all use to communicate with because it helps us get to the point very quickly. And a boring presentation 
never works. It never gets us to that point where the discussion afterwards is going to be useful and decisive. Have you ever been trapped in a boring PowerPoint? I'm hoping this isn't one. Uh, usually it's, it's somebody just reading stuff off the screen and they're not even really sure why one slide follows the other. It's just a lot of information. Well, uh, facts alone don't make a great presentation. And if all you're doing is laying out information that people need to have without giving a context to it, without giving a home or a story to it, you haven't, helped, you haven't created a space for people to be thinking sharply and clearly about what you need to discuss. And so for every presentation you wanna do, every single one, you wanna take the elements that you have to talk about and turn them into a story. You have to tell a story in order to tell a presentation. A good story is the basis of all powerful presentations. So that is how people are gonna remember it. That's how people are gonna be clarified on what the issues are. That's how um, you are going to structure it so that you hold the interest of your audience. Why is storytelling more effective than simply reporting? Well, uh, we've actually done studies on it and it's, it has to do with uh, where and how your brain stores information. Our literal survival as a species used to depend on whether or not people got the message, whether they understood what was being told to them. And so it was vitally important that that message be delivered in a way that people understood and remembered. And so you have to hit all the parts of the brain in order for something to be remembered. You have to use multimedia, you have to use drama. 100,000 years ago, uh, men tried to tell each other about dangers and things that they need to know in order to survive. This was uh, life or death stuff. And people would gather around the campfire and the leader would tell the story of what people needed to know. And they would tell it in bold terms. And he'd use multimedia and people would remember. And that's what a presentation is for. You're gonna tell a story and people are gonna be able to remember it. They're gonna know why you said it. They're gonna know what you said because they're not gonna forget it. You told it in a bold and powerful way. And if we look at how people actually recall information, if you just read the phone book off, if you just sell, tell people boring or not boring, but unrelated information. It'll go into certain parts of the brain, but when you ask people to recall it, they won't necessarily have a context to recall it. They won't have known why it was important. They won't have anything to associate it with. The way your brain works is that some information gets stored in multiple areas, and there have to be multiple triggers in order to be able to call it up. So when you add multimedia to your storytelling, you're you're not only storing the information in certain uh, necessary spots, but you're adding other kinds of information that help the brain recall that information. That's why stories are so powerful. They help people figure out and know how to index that information in their brain. So it's only the story that's gonna make this information memorable. People don't have perfect recall. If you just read them the phone book, they wouldn't know what you had to say. But if you read them the phone book in a context that was a story about so-and-so, you know, having an affair with so-and-so, that would be multimedia. That would be storytelling. That would create a context for remembering it. So what do you need to tell a story? Well, we, these are pretty basic here. You need a beginning, middle, and end. So whatever you have to say can be laid out in this structure. It doesn't necessarily have to be fiction. It can be what uh, you're doing today. You know, it could be a business meeting. It can be, we've run out of pencils. Do we need to have them? Do we need to order more pencils? How do you tell that in a story? Well, if there's a problem that needs to be solved, then it becomes a story in context. The beginning is laying out the issues. Issues, we've run out of pencils. We need to reorder pencils. Uh, but if we just reorder for six, uh, six weeks, we're gonna to have to reorder again, but if we wait uh, two months, we can order a six month supply. And so 
these are the complications. This is where you get into the middle. People understand not only what the facts are, but what is complicating or changing the facts or making uh, a, uh, a choice that has to be made. And in the end, you come to the end, you wanna clarify the issue for your audience. Do we wanna solve the problem quickly or do we wanna solve the problem well? You know, uh, are we gonna order pencils for the short run or are we gonna order pencils to really take care of, you know, the next year or year and a half? So that's a discussion that gets tied to a story that has a context. Now, my example is just really silly and low key, but everything that you might have to discuss can be put into the framework of a story. And in that context, it is understood better by everyone in the room. And if you're clarifying these issues in a short presentation, you've now left room for people to discuss the issues. You know, there may be such a pressing need that we need to buy the pencils now or, or else we're gonna lose a contract. Uh, there are discussions to be had, but only when issues are clarified. So that's what the point of a presentation is. You're going to take the facts that people need to know and you're gonna put them in a context that allows people to understand them and further the discussion. And that's what telling the story is. So how does multimedia come into it? Well, you are telling the story yourself. You are the voice, you are the narrative. You don't ask the slides to tell the story. And so the slides help people understand. And knowing how to make slides that improve understanding, that improve uh, memory and, 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 and media uh, and drama is important because it adds to the sense that people are gonna remember what's going on. And what Nancy is advocating, what Nancy Duarte is advocating in her Slideology books is a sort of combination of image and, and quote. You can have a slide that's all text, you can have a slide that's all image, but when you combine the two, you're actually using the, the, the best of both to really hone in on a specific kind of meaning. Let me give you a, um, an example. Here's a quote. Uh, Education is the kindling of a flame, not the filling of a vessel. It's by Socrates. All right. So Socrates, famous philosopher, lived 3,000 years ago. Uh, how do you interpret this quote? Well, I haven't given you any help here. This is just black text on a white background. This is as neutral as it can possibly make it. So uh, what are the ways that you could interpret this? Well, you could think about this as education through the ages, that, that this is uh, something that's just a human, uh, a human quality and we always need education. Or you can think about this as something that's happening right now and that it's, it's kind of a vital thing. Uh, and uh, what are the clues? Well, you know, Socrates, he's really old. He lived a long time ago. Maybe this is, you know, not that important. But there are ways that I can combine this quote with an image that will allow you to interpret this quote in the way that I intend you to. That's what Nancy Duarte is promoting, the image quote combination. So let's say that I wasn't thinking about education through the ages, but I was thinking about education in the here and now. I mean, right now we are at a critical nexus point of education. We're talking about going back to school in the middle of a pandemic crisis, you know, education couldn't be more important, yet we don't quite know what we're doing. You know, how do I, uh, how do I talk about education as a current issue, something that's hot button topic? Well, I might combine it with a photo of kids in the third world teaching themselves under the under an under, underpass, an overpass. So now you really get this vital sense of the here and now, of education in the modern world, education as a social issue, education as something that is part of the uh, modern headlines. But what if I meant the other thing? What if I meant to talk about education through the ages? What if I meant to promote the sense that it was a, a, you know, a, a, a classical thought from Socrates? Well, I might take a Renaissance painting 
of Socrates and combine that. And suddenly that quote has a different meaning. It has a different context. Because of the image that I combined it with, it means something else. And I am, as the author of this presentation, coloring your interpretation of this quote. So what are other ways that I can do it? Well, I can try to be uh, relating to the here and now to, you know, uh, not social science, but pop culture. You know, I, I know that you guys don't care anything about Socrates. So where would I think that you might know Socrates? Well, um, I tell you what comes to my mind when I see that term, and it's because I'm a little older than you, but, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure had a character, uh, Socrates, where they went back in time and Socrates was called Socrates and that was pretty cool. Um, and so I used to be able to talk about Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. And it just marked me as an old guy. Fortunately, things come around all the time. And so Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure is back in theaters. I actually paid, uh, paid to watch it uh, over the weekend. So, um, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not an old fogey anymore. I'm new and hip. I've got Keanu Reeves here's latest movie here. And we're, this is the character Socrates. But if you're familiar with Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and I show you a movie clip, then I am appealing to my audience knowing who what they know. Now, if you, do, if you weren't fans of movies, if you weren't you know, uh, fans of movies of the 90s, this would not mean anything. So the whole point of choosing the right artwork is knowing who your audience is is knowing what will connect with them. If you're all video gamers, then I might want to choose video game art instead. But if you're movie lovers and you love a great Keanu Reeves movie, then this might be the way that I can connect and we can bond um, creator to audience by knowing that we have shared cultural interests. So it's important that you know who your audience is. I don't want anybody thinking that you design presentations just for everybody. You have to know who you're talking to in order to be able to know how you're going to appeal to them. You know, if, if my audience was all lawyers, I couldn't tell them Keanu Reeves jokes. If my audience were dentists, I'd have to come up with some dental angle because that's how I'm going to respond to who my audience is. And it's my job as a creator to know who my audience is. It's part of my job as research before I ever open up PowerPoint to know who I'm talking to and why and what I want to say to them and what I want to convince them. These are all elements that have to be dealt with before we ever start. And so the prep work to do a great presentation means you have to know who you're talking to. You have to know what your subject's about. You have to know what you want to get from that audience and so forth. And that's all your job as a creative presenter. It's a huge creative act. You're going to find that making these presentations is a lot of fun because of the creative challenges. Um, if, if you were making that high school presentation that was just a list of facts, you know, you go on Wikipedia and cut and paste uh, two or three pages, slap them in there and say you're done, not even know what you made. But when you know what you want to achieve, then achieving it becomes harder. It's much more of a creative act. And the bar for you yourself becomes higher. You don't want to make crap. You want to make something that's really great. And making a great presentation is not easy. It requires work. It requires research. It requires creativity. And we're going to deal with that this month. So storytelling, it's the heart of what you're doing when you're saying a presentation. And uh, if you guys have all had your storytelling theory with uh, Joseph Campbell and so forth, you know that the hero's journey is uh, the, the, what happens in a story, that the hero goes on a quest. And so you might think that if you're the person standing in front of a room talking, that you're the hero and the audience is just paying attention to you and just eating up every word. But if you're doing your job right, you are not the hero, the audience is. What you're doing is you are in a sense with your voice, with your storytelling wiles, you're spinning a movie in the backs of their heads. You're creating a journey that they themselves are going to go on. And therefore, 
you want to use a lot of action words. You want to use a lot of descriptions. You want to use rich media sources so that they can have their imaginations sated to the full as they imagine this thing happening to them. That's what telling a story is all about. When, when, when you were a child and your parents told you a story, you imagined it happened to you. That happens to us still in every story that you have here. You imagine it happening to you. So you have to tell us this information in a way that the audience imagines going on this journey, imagines encountering these difficulties, imagines solving these problems. And there's a term in uh, storytelling lore, ideology, for the person who initiates the hero on his journey, who guides them along. And that is the mentor. Your job is to be the mentor. You are to introduce the audience to their journey, to, to get them started on their path. And then the multimedia that you create should take us the rest of the way. But your story, your guidance of the audience through this adventure makes you the mentor. And that is a particular job in storytelling. You're engaging the hero on the journey and making sure that uh, they take up the track. So uh, meeting the mentor is uh, meeting yourself. You understand what you have to do and you understand that this is your job and you understand that that audience is in your care, that you have to take them on this journey and you have to measure whether or not your success is based on how well they go through that journey. And so that's what storytelling is about. That's what making great presentations are about. You're making a short mini piece that the audience goes through, understands the issues, comes out of it, ready to understand, to, uh, to, to say yes to the conclusion or, or, or dis discuss the issues or join the cause or buy the product, wherever it is you're trying to persuade. That's the story, that's the, the job of a creative presentation. And that's what we're gonna learn how to do this month. So um, that's what's in the reading. I want you to get through all uh, five chapters of uh, Nancy Duarte. You're reading chapters one through four and seven. And you're gonna really need uh, most of that information in order to do the main assignment. But before you do the main assignment, there is a discussion board, and the uh, discussion we would like to have uh, make your initial post by Wednesday. So this is the first thing you'll probably tackle after you get the reading done. So uh, let me dump out of here and uh, open up my browser. And uh, here we are in uh, you know the uh, school interface. And so uh, uh, here's week one assignments. You know, you guys are all familiar with all of this. So uh, week one is, here's where you signed up for your Zoom lecture. And incidentally, this is where the video is going to be. You see down here, Zoom recordings. As soon as this lecture is finished and we get it processed and put on YouTube, we're gonna link it back here and it'll be available all week so you can come back and check this out. And those of you who uh, didn't watch the lecture, you will find the, uh, the, uh, the video recording there. Uh, the reading we talked about, uh, chapters one, two, three, four, and seven is from the O'Reilly site, and you should be able to log on and go directly to these chapters. And anybody who cannot do that should get a hold of me uh, or call tech support. Um, tech support is probably sh your best call because they can fix something. All I can do is tell you to call tech support. I can't fix anything, but I, I want to know if you're having issues and uh, if you're if you're not able to access the uh, book, uh, you know that's important for me to know. Uh, and then the discussion history. All right, so this week's discussion, we just want you to tell us where you're at with the discussions, with 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 uh, presentations. Have you ever given any? Were you successful? Were you unsuccessful? Do you have fear of speaking in public? Do, are you partial to a particular software? Are you trying to learn something uh, new? 
And remember, um, we want to define presentation as broadly, as widely as we can. This isn't just about running PowerPoint in school. Uh, maybe you gave a presentation in church, or maybe you're in the Army. Army has presentations all the time. Uh, maybe you're uh, at work, you have to do a sales pitch. Those are all presentations. So any experience you have in trying to talk to people and convince them of an argument, you can clarify that. But uh, in the discussion uh, board, uh, we have instructions here. You can see that there are download PDFs that you can look at. And when you download the PDF, it has a number of prompts. Now, you do not have to answer all of these prompts, but these are suggestions for things that you can talk about. So what we want from each of you is to, to pick a particular topic and tell us as fully as you can how you feel about speaking in public or have the your previous success or failure with presentations or how you feel about software or what you're looking to learn. So each one of these questions is something that you could base your post on. You do not have to answer them all. These are just prompts. These are suggestions for what you could do, but it's here in the instructions and we wanted to be able to give you that. Uh, and when you do your initial post, you can either do it in this on this first page here where it says completion. So this large box makes, posts that are attached to your name. Now, if I go on to the discussion board, you can see that a post attached to your name, that's what we call an initial post. And if someone responds to you, then that's a reply. So you guys are responsible for one initial post, a large discussion that you put up here. It's probably best if you type it offline and then cut and paste it in, but you can actually type into the box if you wish. Um, and then when you hit post, it will launch. And then by the end of the week, we are asking you to come back and read what your classmates have written and reply to at least two classmates. More if better, uh, more if possible. The more classmates you respond to, the better off you are. But you can see that we put in here that we want you to try to get that initial post in by Wednesday night. Now that's not a hard deadline. If you miss it and post on Tuesday, Thursday night, it's okay. But we certainly don't want you to wait until Sunday night because then no one has a chance to respond to your posts. So as soon as you get your posts done, you can you know, come back and respond to other folks as well. And you have until the end of the week, till Sunday night to get all of those responses done. So that's the discussion activity. It's not a big deal. Just make sure that you're fully explaining yourself when you're talking about how you feel about presentations and so forth. And uh, you know, if you have a huge fear about speaking out loud, you can voice it. Doesn't mean we're gonna let you off the hook. Everybody in this month is going to voice their uh, this, um, narrative. And uh, we're gonna record it. And uh, we're not doing these live. This isn't on the campus version of this class. Everyone has to present to the rest of the class live um, at the end of the month. Here, we're gonna just make pre-recorded presentations we're gonna put them to video or we're gonna have PowerPoint files that we turn in, but you're, uh, uh, you're, you're spared that. You, you, you can record your audio on your own so no one's watching you. And uh, you know if you don't want anyone else to see it, only I will see it, but uh, you are gonna to have to speak out loud. So get close to that. And then the main activity this week, we're calling professional presentation analysis. So this week, instead of actually making a presentation, we're gonna see a lot of other presentations. We're gonna create a kind of library or context in your head for what presentations can be. And we're gonna do that by sending you to the TED Talks site. I don't know, uh, most of you have heard about TED Talks. Some of you probably haven't, but TED stands for Technology, Education, and Design. And they're a company that have been putting on conferences around the world for the last dozen years or so. And instead of having one main speaker who speaks for an hour and a half, they might have 20 speakers over the course of two or three days, and each one of them speaks in short presentations. So every single one of these TED Talks is 20 minutes or less. They're six to 20 minutes long. But in the course of uh, a dozen years or more, they've had them all over the world. 
they now have 3,500 or more presentations that you can have access to on their website. It's an enormous amount of stuff with an enormous range of interests. And so there are search tools, you can find things. Some of you may have seen some TED Talks before. I encourage you to find new TED Talks. Um, you know, if you have a favorite TED Talk and you're determined to use that, I won't stop you. But I really, really, really encourage you to just to go down the rabbit hole and watch as many TED Talks as you can. If you've never seen TED Talks before, uh, they can't do anything but make you smarter. They're just amazing and they're really serendipitous. They, you, you can't imagine all the creativity that's on display. And you, ha you see a number of different presenters presenting in a number of different styles. Some uh, use a traditional lectures with slides, some use props, uh, some um, just stand there and use their body. So uh, for the most part, these are people standing on a stage pitching to an audience in a theater. So that's a kind of standard trope, but they're all videotaped and they're all accessible on this website. So your job is to pick three and uh, write reviews. This is a text assignment. So um, if I come back here to this assignment, uh, Note that in the instructions here, we are going to ask you, research and watch a minimum of three different TED Talks to answer the question, what makes a presentation effective, creative, captivating, and or inspiring? Choose any TED Talk you like, paying special attention to how the message is crafted. So what I want is not a report on the TED Talk. Don't tell me what they talked about. I want you to report on the presenter. You're reviewing the presenter. You're telling me how well the presenter did his or her job. And again, there are a number of prompts here. You don't have to answer them. This is not a, a Q&A kind of thing. I want you to write paragraph style reviews. But these are things to help you get started and what to think about. So what we're asking for you to do is to uh, pick three TED Talks and write two or three paragraph reviews of each TED Talk. Uh, I have a, examples of what I want to show you here uh, for each class. Uh, examples, 1.4. And, and so each one of these is a written presentation. So I want you to write two or three paragraphs on each different topic. For each topic, I want you to tell me who the presenter is, name them, and tell me the name of the presentation. So please identify which one you're talking to. I get a couple of presentations uh, every so often in which somebody says, I like what the pres presenter did, and you don't tell me who the presenter is, or you don't tell me what the name of the topic is, and therefore it becomes very, very hard for me to figure that out. But uh, I have a lot of examples here, and I'm happy to share these examples. So if you guys are interested in how other people formatted things, uh, I'm, I'm free to share that. But what we're looking for is we want you to come in and we want you to watch these TED Talks that can all be viewed on the web, TED Talk website. Some can be viewed in other places. Uh, people are interested in TEDx. TEDx is fine. Um, the only limitation here is you have to choose a presentation in which there is a visible presenter. Some of these TED Talks are animations and they don't have a visible presenter. You need to be able to point out to a person and tell me how well they did. And then the reading that you did this week from Nancy Duarte becomes the vocabulary you can use for talking about how well they did or didn't do their job. You may find something, you may find a, a TED Talk that you think a person right. did a poor um, job. And focus. And I'm happy for you to use that. You don't have to tell me how great they did. You can tell me how awful they did. If you have the context for saying what they did wrong, then I'm going to know that you understand what it is that a presenter should or shouldn't do. So I want you to write a two or three paragraph review of each one of the three TED Talks. If I come back to the instructions, that's part one. Tell me what each one of these guys did. Write three separate reviews 
put them in the same page. You don't have to do different documents, but uh, three separate reviews of individual TED Talks. And then final step is conclude your assignment with a list, a single list of 10 qualities that all three TED Talks shared. So you're writing each one about each one individually in paragraph form. And then at the end, you're gonna give me a list of 10 things in which you're comparing the TED Talks to each other. And this stuff gonna, gonna, is gonna come straight out of the Nancy Duarte reading. And if I show you an example here um, of what you know this student has put in, it's stuff like uh, create memorable moments, utilize multimedia, stay engaged, so uh, memorize your speech, breath control. So these are things you're gonna find that Nancy Duarte has listed as things presenters should do. So uh, if you get the reading done, then you'll have uh, a knowledge base for writing the, the 10 qualities, but don't forget to put the 10 qualities in. And that was step three. Step two that I missed, create a document for this assignment and include supporting visual imagery. You'll notice this example here has inserted uh, imagery. Now this is a text document. I don't want you to do this in PowerPoint. I want you to do this in Word or uh, Pages or uh, Google Docs, any, any Word document program you want. But I want you to include imagery. And the imagery is to help me understand what you're saying. So in the same way that a slide supports your verbal narrative in a slideshow, these images inside your writing are gonna help me understand what you've written. And so I'm judging these images, not on how many, it's up to you how many you wanna have. You can have as, as, as many or as few as you like, you need to have at least one. But I'm gonna say, did you pick an image and did it help communicate the meaning of what you had to say? So did you just pick a pretty picture or did you pick an image that helped Un further my understanding of what's going on. Now certainly showing me um, a shot of the presenter, something that uh, probably all of you want to do. You know, if, if you tell me that uh, this is Nancy Oreskes, then I want to see who Nancy Oreskes is. Uh, so a shot of the presenter might be appropriate, but there's all kinds of other things that you could put in here. Uh, some of which you can do by going to a search engine but a lot of these images you're gonna get by just going to the TED Talk site and doing screen captures. If you're on a Mac, it's really simple to do a screen capture. Uh, you know, I just find the point that I want. This guy doesn't seem to be uh, on a stage. He's got standing outside and so forth. So uh, as you watch these TED Talks, you have lots of different um, setups. This guy's in front of uh, kind of a, a big prop. He also has slides. Quartz. And so forth. Scope and scale. So um, you can do screen captures. If you're on a, a, a Chrome, uh, there's extensions you can get that'll do screen captures for you and so forth. And to make sure that everybody's got the latest, greatest software, Full Sales makes sure everybody has Office 365. You need it to run your uh, email for um, Outlook, but it also means you've got the latest version of Word and the latest version of PowerPoint. So this is something that you can do in Word and uh, you can get the, you can install it on whatever you have here. So on the link for 1.4, we put in handy links to where you can get the, the downloadable software for Office 365. You can get it for Windows, Mac, Android, or iOS. So if you wanna put it on your iPad, or your iPhone, you can do that. And know also that uh, the license for Office 365 is a four-year license. It's something that Microsoft does for students. And most students go to school for four years. So they're giving you a four-year license to, full, uh, to, to uh, Office 365, and you're gonna get out of school faster than that. So you're actually gonna have access to Office 365 after you graduate for a year, year and a half. That's kind of a cool thing. Uh, and, you're, and the license allows you to put it on two devices at the same time. So you can put it on the computer you're using right now, and then four months from now when you get your LaunchBox computer, you can put it on that computer as well. So this is a very nice deal from, off, uh, from Microsoft, um, and it makes sure that you're always using the latest software. 
So for those of us that are going to help you, help support you on that software, using Word, using PowerPoint, it's important that you're on the latest version so we always know what you're talking about. But uh, when you finish your assignment, there is a, drop, a completion box here. Uh, if you're on a computer, if you're on a Mac or a PC, you will take that Word doc or that PDF, uh, I like PDFs as well, uh, and drop it here and that will upload your homework. If you're on a mobile device, then you're probably gonna be using the cloud version of Office 365, which means your homework is not a file on your phone, it is a link in the cloud. And for those, you probably would want to create a, a, a feedback message just telling me, Here, here's the link to the file. So if you're on a computer, you're uploading a file. If you're on a mobile device, you're giving me a link to the shared object, shared device in the cloud. I hope that's clear. So uh, do I have any questions here? Um, who has a question for me? We only want... Go ahead. Uh, this is Harold. Um, I was like in and out, like busy a little bit, but uh, my question was, when is the presentation due? Is it due at the end of this week or at the end of this term? Well, uh, I haven't talked about the presentation and that's uh, something I want to get to. So, uh, this month, you're going to make a major presentation and it's going to be due at the end of the week three. And when you turn it in, you're going to get feedback on that presentation from me. And I'm going to turn that around as fast as I can. And then in week four, you're going to revise that presentation and make the final version in week four. So we're not making a presentation this week. This week we're looking at TED Talks and, and gaining a knowledge of what presentations are. Next week I will tell you the topic of the presentation and we're gonna make a plan. And so the, the assignment for week two is that you're gonna make the blueprint, you're gonna make the text document, the notes behind your presentation. Nobody makes the presentation in week two, but you write down all the stuff that's gonna go in it. So you already know what you're dealing with. And then in week two is when you, week three is, is when you actually start making the presentation. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Um, and, and there's some other assignments that you're going to be doing, but basically the main presentation that you're going to be doing is uh, this assignment that is a presentation that's due in week three and final in week four, but you make the plan in week two. And this week we're just kind of getting to know what presentations can do. And we're going to give you access to different kinds of software to record audio and make multimedia and do different things. Uh, so those of you that want to use PowerPoint can use PowerPoint. Those that want to use something else, you won't have to use PowerPoint for this. You'll have some alternatives. Uh, Nick writes, do we need to explain at the end, at uh, the list at the end of the assignment or just make a bullet list? Uh, that's a great question and I wish I'd uh, mentioned that. Um, where am I? Um, what you should do is you can make a, a, a kind of shorthand list of what the, what the quality is, but then I want you to kind of give me a, a note on where it occurred or who did what. So if the, if the, if the uh, quality is tell a joke, then mention where in the, the, uh, the, the videos that you watch did so-and-so tell a joke or you know, uh, uh, use hand gestures or, you know, different things like that. So you are explaining where they occur in, in, uh, in addition to saying what the quality is. Uh, so there's a little bit of writing. It doesn't have to be, you know, this fulsome, but uh, I want it to be more than a bullet list. And in fact, I've got a lot of samples here and I'm happy to share them with everybody. Um, 
So rather than give everybody the same um, samples, if you send me a note asking for a sample, I'll send everybody different ones. And my only, uh, my only rule is gonna be whatever the three videos are in that sample that I sent you, you can't use those. That way I'm not closing off any particular TED Talks. If I give everybody the same sample, I'd say can't use these three and I don't wanna do that. But um, you know, if I send you a sample of what somebody else had written, then I just don't want you to use their examples that you choose. There's, there's 3,500 other TED Talks, so there's plenty to choose from. But all you have to do is send me a message on, full, on the FSO site or on Discord or in text asking for a sample, and I'll share them out with everybody. Does it matter what type of TED Talks we watch? You can watch TEDx. Don't watch any that are animated. You have to have a visible uh, presenter. Those are my only requirements there. And uh, while I'm directing everyone to the TED site, you can see an awful lot of them on um, YouTube. And sometimes you can see them on other, like on TV channels. So TED Talks can be viewed in lots of places. Anywhere you wanna watch is fine. But then if you wanna start you know, doing screen captures, the website is your best bet. Um, and one thing about uh, using images, if you're taking them from some place, tell us where they came from. If you're, if you're taking your images from the TED Talk website, just say they came from the TED Talk website. If you take them from some other site, just mention where they came from. I'm not gonna have a lot of heavy duty um, uh, citation requirements. You're gonna get those later in some other classes. But all I want you to do is, if you're using an image that you didn't create, um, acknowledge the source. All right, let's see. Again, um, image from TED Talk is as is, is, is complicated as I want it. You don't have to do anything really uh, specific for the citation. Any more questions? If not, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to be around all week. So if you do have questions, you can get a hold of me in uh, any of the thousand ways we talked about. Uh, again, I'm really glad you guys came to Full Sail. I'm really glad that uh, you know we're going to have uh, a, a chance to create stuff together this week. I, I think this is a really uh, interesting crew, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we're going to get some really interesting work out of you guys. So I'm uh, – I'm, uh, Looking forward to this month. Hope you guys are too. Good night, everybody.